Hey, I'm Josh of Ragged Oak. Let's talk about writing and producing a song. And fall down. So my debut album, Letters to God, Man and Myself, comes out on October 27th. And at the point that I'm recording this, I have released the first single. It's a song called Live Like You're Alive. And the next single, a song called Jericho, is coming out in just a few days. And I wanted to talk about the difference between creating these two songs. Sometimes when you're writing music, it's something that just flows out of you. You might just write all of these lines down in one go or just come up with this riff out of nowhere and feel super inspired and things just take you somewhere. Other times you're trying to capture a feeling, you're trying to convey an idea and you really have to just grind it out and figure out how to solve these sort of musical problems that you've put in front of yourself. The first song that I released, Live Like You're Alive, was honestly the easiest to make in the entire process of making this whole record. I wrote Live Like You're Alive back in 2019. I recorded the first demo of it actually on the, the same day that I wrote the song. And I wrote this little riff in A, it's really simple, and that riff has actually stuck through every single demo of the song since then. Take a good look in the mirror, watch your eyes, see how they glimmer, now's the time when you decide to live like you're alive. When I came to the cabin to record the final versions of this song, I had almost everything the same as when I did that first demo. I changed a little bit on the vocals, and then Kaike came in and added this really simple but really excellent drum bit to the song that just drove it. And there was really not a lot of debate or struggle or figuring out how to do this song because it was all just kind of there. It made sense, it was something that came from the beginning, we knew exactly what we were going into. Then there's Jericho. I wrote the first draft of Jericho's lyrics in the same year that I wrote the first draft of Live Like You're Alive. I wrote a sentence, which was, this is my heart bleeding in my hands. I ripped it out for you. And I wrote it in my journal and I drew a little doodle of hands holding a heart, which is now actually what our cover artwork is for this single. During the time that I wrote Jericho, I was listening to a lot of a band called Circa Survive, primarily this incredible album called Blue Sky Noise. And there is a song on that album called Fever Dreams that has this really quick strummed guitar part. <laughs> So I wanted to take that and kind of translate it over into this song that I was writing called Jericho. So I pretty much just straight up tried to rip that song off. So I took their concept and I had the first few lines of this song that I had written. I bring this song to a couple of my friends and we jam it out the first night using that kind of riff that I ripped off of Fever Dreams. <laughs> Here are the only things that we kept from the first night of jamming to this song. One, the first few lines, and two, that we wanted to do a drop and then a really big ending. Everything else pretty much changed. I tried doing a first demo of this and I just couldn't create one that I liked, that felt right. So this song goes on pause. It goes on pause for almost a year. And it's something that I'm always thinking about and I'm like, do I retire? Jericho and try something else or do I keep giving it a shot and I go through some different demos of some other songs and I always ended up just kind of coming back to Jericho and being like this song has something and I need to find it. So for the next iteration of Jericho I decide to remove the rapid strumming thing. I recorded that and frankly found the song boring so I put it on pause again. Like I said this song has been a real pain in my ass. So Jericho is still in the back of my mind but then I'm listening to this song by one of my all-time favorite bands, Manchester Orchestra, called Pride. And there is just all of this growth of riffs throughout the song. So I start to think that maybe what Jericho needs is a really strong, simple riff to kind of carry through the first couple of acts. I come up with this riff, and I'm playing it, and I'm like, ah, you know what? We gotta take the chord progression that we wrote for the original song, and we gotta pull that away and move it. So we take the riff, 
I rewrite the vocal melody. I record a demo, this sounds solid. And then I tack on an additional 15 BPM to my original plan for the speed of this song, which just makes it a whole lot more fun to play and pushes you forward and makes it a little shorter because I have a habit of writing songs that are way too long. So I take this demo and I send it to Kaike and I'm like, hey, this is Jericho. Can you write some drums to it? We're going to record this song. We're going to figure out a way to do it when you come and record with me at this cabin. So I met Josh last summer, last, June 2022, uh, at a youth camp that we went to. Uh, and we didn't know each other at the time, but we were bandmates. He mentioned that he had written some songs and wanted to record them and asked if I would ever record them. And I told them that I would. A year later, I think, what, what was it? February, March? Uh, Josh texts me, would you be down to drive to Durango to record the album for me? And I said, yes. And I was not thinking when I replied because it was an eight hour long drive, driving through blizzards. But yeah, he, he was like, dude, come up record an album with me, record drum parts. And I did, and I had no faith in him. I said, <laughs> what are, I said, what are these songs, dude? Like, do these songs even need drums? And so I drove for eight hours with those demos on repeat. And when I got there, it was just magical. So I get to the cabin a couple of days before Kaike gets there and I'm just tracking guitars on these songs to make sure that we've got those pretty much ready to go by the time that we're doing drums. So I get these tracks, Kaike comes to the cabin, we set up drums and then Jericho takes a full day to record. I remember like specifically for Jericho, we recorded, yeah, we spent like a whole day on it. Ninety percent of the process was in the room while we were doing it. Like stuff was just coming to mind, and we were just like, "Yep, let's try it." No, nope, that sucked. Let's not do that. I wanted to make the connection between, like, when the walls of Jericho like rumble down, and so I wanted to be like somewhat rumbly song. Like I want walls to come down when this song is played. Like quite literally starting off with like the tom that like right off the bat just gives that like feel of like oh okay like this song means business like we're not here to play around and just like the breakdowns at the end is just such a nice way to like wrap up the song because you're just going at it for like four minutes and then you just end it with some nice crashes just recording all of that took some time and by the end we had these powerful drums and this really great guitar bit all together and something that was just cool and we knew it was cool and we were really excited about it it is such a good song to listen to but the absolute pain that writing this song has been was definitely not over yet so i'm recording this vocal and decided that during verse three i want to jump up into a harmony of what the guitar is playing. This harmony that I jump to is just right at the top of my range. And so I hit the end of this verse and my voice breaks and I'm like, hold up, I've got to scream. So I spent like a day just trying to really warm up my voice and get it into a place where I could control where it breaks. It's not my biggest talent, but I recorded some screaming today for a song on my album. Black out the sky! And we get this great piece and then we're like, oh, we need a choir at the end. And then we have this choir vocal that I had to take these seven voices that I recorded in a group and kind of pitch them up and duplicate them and add them into different spaces so that it sounded like it was 40 people. I will walk around and walk around until they fall. You may now be thinking that that was everything that we needed for Jericho but it wasn't. 
So now I sent the song to my good friend Andy, and Andy was going to record some keys on it. Nothing is MIDI, everything is analog, a lot of roads and weird noises. The first version that he sent me had roughly 20 different keys patches that he added to the song, and then he actually simplified it, doing another set of recordings on his end that he thought actually fit the song much better. And those ones are the ones that are in the song. And then I'm listening to the song and I'm getting ready for the final stages and I just realized my solo at the end sucks. So I proceeded to spend two weeks rewriting this guitar solo, testing it. That takes me long enough. And now I'm sending it away to Addison Savon to get mixed. And when we sent it away, it, it was freaky. Because a lot of the songs on this album have a lot of tracks. You know, it's a kind of ambient, shoegaze rock record. That's normal. But Jericho had a lot. There was a very, very delicate balance that we thought we had found with the instrumentation, but that we knew that the mixing process was gonna be something else. So Addison gets it, and I get the first couple of versions of it, and I'm just like blown away. But there's some stuff that's missing. So we do a few revisions, and then we get to revision number five, and I'm like, I think this is the one. But as tends to happen, I listen to revision five a few times throughout a week, and I realize that that's not the one. We go through two more to get to revision number seven. The most revisions we have of any song that's on the album. And then I go back and I listen to revision number four and I'm like, dude, that's the one. I have heard seven versions of this and we actually need to go back to what we had before. What, we went through seven variations of it, I think? Yeah, um, yep. and then we went back to the four. Yeah. <laughs> yep. <laughs> So we do a couple small tweaks on revision four that were just little baby things that I wanted. And then I got that one back from Addison. And now we have the final mix. And then we go to mastering in which Kaden, who took this project on, we went through four mastering revisions. Jericho is awesome. I love Jericho. Oh, thank you, man. That song's been hell to make. Addison and I did seven revisions of Jericho oh, wow. <laughs> just cr <laughs> cruising and then and then I chose version four like the absolute <laughs> like worst of course your standard diva musician move of like give me seven seven revisions and it's like actually I liked the one three revisions ago but we went through I think three revisions of that one right um yeah 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 I think I may have even added more saturation to the Jericho not because it didn't have enough but because it brought out all that really cool, those cool mid characteristics and your distortions, you know, and like your fuzzes sure. and, and like that great, like that gang vocal is so cool. But then that final product was just perfect. So to summarize, in 2019, I wrote the first few lines of a song that ended up being named Jericho. I recorded upwards of 10 completely different demos of this song. I adjusted the lyrics. I changed the instrumentation. I moved from a chord progression to a riff. I changed the riff into a different key. We added a completely different drum part. There were keys parts that were never intended to be there that ended up just adding a life and livelihood to this song that we never thought was going to happen. It went through a mixing process with a talented engineer and then a mastering process with a very talented mastering engineer. And we ended up with something that we are so intensely proud of. I'm recording this story for a couple of reasons. The first one is that I hope that in knowing the history of this song, when you go to listen to it, you get a little bit more out of it. You understand the grit and the work that went into it. There's literal blood that went into it. Andy does the slide on his keys and he ripped the cuticles off of his fingernails and bled on the keyboard. So we've truly put blood and sweat and tears into this song. And I hope that you can hear that and feel that when you listen to it. The other reason that I'm recording this is because I think it's important for everybody to know that whatever art you make, it's not always something that just flows out of you. It's not always easy. Art takes perseverance. Whether you're a painter or a musician or a writer, it takes a whole lot of revision and trying again and holding on to something. And just because something doesn't work the first time or the second time or the seventh time doesn't mean 
that it's not good. It just means you haven't cracked it yet. For the people that are making music right now and think they suck, it's just a phase because you haven't either, one, found the right producer to like produce your songs or bring your ideas to life of what it like of what it could really be and two like you know you probably just need to collaborate with other musicians because man i i look back at like how we wrote these parts or at least how i wrote these parts and i'd say that editing is thinking in the moment what you're creating gives you another idea to create something else so sometimes you never you like you would never get those ideas if you would have never started creating. So I hope that you can see this and just be inspired to stay persistent. If you have that project that's just holding a space in your brain and you can't let it go, keep going because you'll find it. And maybe one day you get to put that out and show it to the world. This song took nearly four years to write and i'm sure that down the line i'm gonna have songs that took me even longer so stick with it persevere hit revision number 20 and keep going because one day you're gonna crack it anyway this is a song that we are incredibly proud to introduce you to and it's called jericho Oh! 